Hey guys, Thunderset here, finally returning to a row mages. Uh, the first deck I made for them was the first of the new box. I was just trying to explore all the combos. And now we've really honed in on what combos work. And regrettably, it's still what grows in the graveyard. Because our boss monster is a level 5 synchro, so really, you want to revolve around that combo. Um, but there's lots of combos you could revolve around, like other spell cards and other traps. But uh, we're focusing on the simple stuff with the synchro monster. So the whole idea is to heal on your enemy's turn, gain some life points, triggering effects. You can trigger the effect of this trap card, which will let you destroy a monster when you gain life points. She will switch the attack position or defense position of a monster when you gain life points. She draws a card. You don't usually want to do that on your opponent's turn. I mean, you can. And Kanaga, she'll return a card, a spell card, to the hand, so you definitely want to do that on your opponent's turn after they set everything. And of course our boss monster has probably the best, where she will negate a monster's effect. So you really want to use that on your opponent's turn, disrupt their plays, and win the duel. So that's the whole idea. So how are we healing on our own turn? We're using human wins. You can gain 500 life points as long as your life points are lower than your opponent's. So you can also lose life points to get your life points lower than your opponents with this same card by adding a row mage monster to your hand and you lose a thousand life points. So you lose a thousand life points first, then you heal. That will trigger hopefully your rosemary, you negate a monster effect, or you switch a monster to defense, or you send a spell card to the hand, and that's the idea. Same with this card, it has a few ways you can heal. You can send a plant monster from your hand or field, to the graveyard, gain 500, or target a monster, plant type monster in the graveyard, shuffle it into the deck, gain 500. So with what grows in the graveyard, that second one is always live, so you'll always have a heal there. And uh, this one's really good too, pay a thousand, special summon one aroma monster from your graveyard. So it's actually a pretty decent trap card we're using. And like I said, this is one that triggers with the heal. Obviously you know what Garden does, it's a heal on its own. And uh, yeah, this is for what grows in the graveyard. You get the synchro into your boss. But we're also running Trumpeter. Trumpeter gives us stuff like Splendid Rose, who under Aroma Garden will be lethal on his own. It's 2700. Then you have your attack, which would be 1350. Swing again, that's 4000. So he's an OTK all by himself when he's under Aroma Garden. And you have another monster to clear whatever face down monster you're facing, or stuff like that. It'll be a little more clear in the replays, so I hope you guys enjoy, and thanks for watching. Alright, Akiza vs. Akiza. Going first, I think this is an actual mirror match too, a Romage vs. Romage. She's using a different skill, she's using Balance, which is super tempting because there was just so much Romage support added. She's going to show you a spell card that's also very good. But like I said, you want to focus on the combos, so it's either focus around the Synchro combo, which is your boss monster, or maybe run Bergamot and focus around this combo a little more that he's doing here. He's doing Aroma Gardening, which is a very strong card. It'll let him special summon when you attack him directly, and his life points are lower than yours. So here's the combo, guys. He's using Aroma Aegis. He has nothing to do. We're going to use a Search, and now we can do a Heal. This card we just have face up to chill. So there's our heal, that triggers Rosemary. Had he a monster, we could have stopped an attack, but we don't, so we just go on our own. We're gonna go with the Kanaga instead of the Rose Whip. Search a uh, Marjoram. So we're gonna s send away a face down. He's gonna flip up a Human Winds of his own. That's gonna give him a search and a heal. He had Blessed Winds also, but that's not gonna do anything. It wouldn't have done much for him anyway. So we kind of missed the wrong card. Now we're going into Swing, that's going to trigger his Aroma Gardening. He brings out a Rosemary of his own. She's weak thanks to our Kanaga, but now uses the Human Winds Heal. And Aroma Gardening gives you a heal when any, mon when any Aroma Monster is summoned. But we get to destroy it anyway with our Kanaga. That triggers his Marjoram though. So, you know, this duel's already all over the place with all these... Uh, Romages. So he gets to banish my Dark Verger, which hurts our Rose Whip, but there was no room for Verger anyway. Here in our opponent's turn. Our life points are way lower now, so our Human Winds is always going to be live. We don't have to do a search or anything. 
Here he's going to get a banish that doesn't banish anything and switches our Kanaga to defense. We use our Human Winds now, that lets our Kanaga return that face down, that lets our Rosemary flip her to defense. So now Aroma Gardening lets us gain a thousand. Blessed Winds is going to let us special summon that Kanaga right back. We're going to use Aroma Gardening immediately. Our opponent uses Human Winds to knock his life points down and search an Angelica. It's not really going to make a difference right now. We're going to Kanaga his Aroma Gardening back to his hand. We're going to switch her to defense. Normal summon the Rose Whip. Synchro summon with the Kanaga into our Bryonic Dragon, guys. Throw away our whole hand, return those monsters, and now our opponent's nice and vulnerable. We use our Blessed Winds to special summon our Marjoram, guys. Now, even if he uses that Angelica, we have him for lethal. But he doesn't get a chance because Rosemary stops them from using effects. All great, great stuff, guys. Okay, here's Mako. We're going first. What grows in the graveyard? So we start with a Jasmine, who's going to be a plus one with the Roma Garden. And two traps, which is really all you need. One to heal and one to react to the heal. Jasmine pulled a Majorum, which is very good to protect her too. So we're fighting Drag Unity. We're going to use our Drag Winds. Now we use Human Winds. Use the Search to lower your life points below your opponent's. Now we use its own heal after we have a target. We trigger the Human Winds. That's going to give us a plus one, but that's going to trigger our Dried Winds, guys. So Dried Winds is going to destroy a card on the field. We uh, destroy this boy, the Coos, which leaves him swinging. We use our Aroma Garden and our Majorum, which is going to let us banish the Coos. So we're going well. We just need an OTK here. We get a Kanaga. We're gonna bring out the Rose Whip. Synchro into Rosemary. Activate our heal. That's Dried Winds. Dried Winds destroys a monster. Rosemary could have negated its effect. And Majorum gets to banish a monster. So all of that from one heal. 3k monsters. It was over guys. Great stuff. Okay, I was very, very happy to get this replay because I lose to this deck way, 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 way too often. So it's good to get one over on him. And it shows you the basic idea of Aurel Mages. So he is playing that uh, Cyber Sign Cancer. And I wouldn't even mind it, it's just so old. Like, I don't understand why it's come back into play. It's been around forever, forever. But uh, people like to play it now because... Uh, Dark Calvary and this negating, targeting, and all that stuff. But it doesn't matter to us because we're starting with a Rosemary. We're starting with Blessed Winds or Human Winds. Either of those can heal us. So even if he was to hit one of them, either of them can heal. We use it in the draw phase, so there's no going wrong. We use a search. That way both the heals are alive for nothing. He's got his heal. He uses a Goblin Thief. Does not affect what we're doing. Normal summons his Cyberstein, trying to get the effect off, but we just chain one of our heals to the normal summon. That lets Rosemary target him. Once we're targeting him, his effect is negated. Works out great. Great, great stuff, guys. Okay, here we are versus Nishizu. I definitely expect her to be banlisted. No extra deck for her. We have what throws in the graveyard. Dried Winds and a way to heal. But it's a trap card, so we're obviously not going to be able to do that. I think this is just to show you Splendid Rose's OTK ability. So Jasmine works with any plant. As long as your life points are higher, that means we can bring this boy out. Trumpeter is going to turn into Splendid Rose. And you'll see how Splendid Rose is an OTK all on its own. Uh, we swing with that first, but pretend we didn't. So we did 2700 plus 1350. That's 4,050 guys, so OTK all on your own when you just have a Splendid Rose. Have something to clear a monster, have an opponent whose field is vulnerable, and Splendid Rose is an OTK. It's the whole point of Trumpeter. Great, great stuff, guys. Okay, here's a Jade and you fell. We're going first, though. And 
and it is, I believe, Neo Space. Yep. No slaver map for that guy. We have our garden, we have Kanagas, and some human wins. So not a bad starting hand. Probably not the best versus something with a Neos, but uh, not bad. We heal with Aroma Garden that lets us return his field spell, not that it does anything. We use human wins to search our Mardra. Now it's live with its heal, we'll be able to return any uh, spell card we want. We're gonna choose that slot. And now it's our turn. We're gonna do it immediately so he doesn't have a chance to chain. We could have normal summoned this Kanaga and threw two of them back, but we're gonna go for the Synchro play for Splendid Rose because Splendid Rose is an OTK right now, guys. If we're able to, to clear this monster with our 1900, that back rows nothing. Splendid Rose can OTK all on his own thanks to Aroma Gardening, but that back row is not nothing. It's a Wall of D and we hit him to an Invoker, so we're in trouble, right? But it's okay. So he searches his invocation. We use our human wins to heal. Now we're even life points. He sets three back row, does not do a summoning. Kanaga is going to return after our human wins, gets us below the life points, and then heals those life points. We top deck another human wins, that's not what we want. But we're still lower than him, so we normal summon another Kanaga, use human wins, hit both of what is battle traps, because he didn't have any delay. Return those, heal our life points once again with Aroma Garden. That lowers the Invoker low enough for him to clear, and then we all go. He swings again for a little bit of damage by banishing a monster, but what that also does is return his attack back to 2700. Because we manipulated it, we cut it in half, and then after that happens, it returns back to its base. Get around that wall of D. So here our opponent uses an invocation with a Brave Neos. That gives him a uh, Elemental Hero Brave Neos. I got timed out in his turn while having no option. Uh, it was pretty, pretty weird. It's been happening for a while, but I had a clear path to win. Because I had my Rose, Splendid Rose back, and we had two Kanagas to return that back row. So regardless, we are going to win. But uh, that's how it goes, guys. It's uh, it's better. Aromages are better. You're healing more on your opponent's turn, and that's something Aromages really wanted to do. And we were only able to do that with like one normal trap and Angelica, and Angelica wasn't the best to do it. So uh, this works out a little better. It's definitely stronger. You can disrupt plays, but uh, I, I still wouldn't trust it in anything serious. So just if you're a fan of the archetype, and thanks for watching, guys.